The Mitsubishi Trident has always been a really pragmatic choice in the four-wheel drive ute segment. It's never been the best overall, but it's been great in terms of value, and it's found a lot of loyal followers over the years. Well, we've got a new model now. This is bigger, it's got more tech, it's got more power, it's got more torque, but of course it's more expensive as well. So, does this model continue that trend of being a really, really good value choice in the segment, or is it now fighting further up the field in terms of being a premium offering. We're getting a chance to get behind the wheel on-road and off-road today. Let's have a closer look at the new Mitsubishi Triton. The next generation Mitsubishi Triton is on sale now and is rolling into dealerships around the country as you're watching this video. It's priced from $43,690 plus on-road costs as a two-wheel drive double cab model, while the cheapest four-wheel drive double cab is $50,940, which is also plus on-road costs. This spec is called GLX, and at the other end of the spectrum is GSR, top specification, and that is priced from $63,840, also plus on-roads. But for the full rundown of pricing and specification for this new Triton, head over to our website at drive.com.au. This new Triton is a fully new generation all over. It's wider and longer than what it replaces with an increased wheelbase and higher GVM. The latter chassis is bigger and thicker and Australian delivered models also get a specific suspension tune for our market. There's an electrically assisted steering system, more safety equipment, more technology and an upgraded infotainment system. One engine is shared across the range, which is a 2.4 litre twin turbocharged diesel four cylinder unit. It makes 150 kilowatts and 470 newton meters, running through a six speed automatic transmission but a manual gearbox will be offered in the future in lower specification grades. GLS and GSR specification models get Super Select 2 four-wheel drive systems, while the GLX and GLX Plus get a more rudimentary part-time four-wheel drive system. Here's the interior of the new Triton, and it's very easy to see that this is a massive improvement over the previous generation model. The Triton is longer now, and it's wider, and you do get that sense when you're in the cabin here. It feels a bit more comfortable, but also more spacious and absolutely a lot more modern. A lot of that comes from the infotainment display. That's a nine inch display there. You might find it familiar because that is the same as what you get in a Mitsubishi Outlander. It also comes from the Nissan side of the Alliance business there. So things like Nissan X-Trails have it and other things as well. But you've got a volume dial there. You've got Apple CarPlay, which is wireless. You've got Android Auto as well, native navigation, decent sound system. This is a good setup. It's not as big or as impressive as some others in the segment, but hey, do you really need more than what you've got here? I would say probably not. You've got a good size multifunction display in front of you there. You, that gives you things like tire pressure monitoring, speed readout, and a lot of other things, fuel consumption. That's a good setup there. And then you've got your good old fashioned speedo and taco. But in terms of practicalities overall, there's two cup holders here. This GSR specification gets some additional ones as well. Two pop out cup holders there in the dash. There's some additional storage up there in front of the passenger as well and there is also a wireless charging plug. There's a fair amount of storage, which is good. He's also got a lot of piano black material here, which I'm a little bit worried about in terms of longevity, especially if you've got a bit of a rough and tumble environment for this Triton. That might get scratched around a little bit. We'll see how that goes in the future, I suppose. But in terms of ergonomics, this is a big step change forward. The seats are better. It feels ergonomically more comfortable to drive, I think, in comparison to the old generation. You've got electric adjustment in the seat in this specification, but other specs below stick with manual. There's tilt and reach in the steering column here. And, you know, for the price, this, I've said this a few times in this review, and I think it's the real theme of this Triton. It's not the best in the segment, but it's playing in that area where it feels like really, really good value for money, especially now that it's been updated with a lot of safety, a lot of technology, and just being updated just about everywhere in the experience. A quick little power outlet count here on top of that wireless charging pad. We've got one 12 volt plug there, one USB-C and one USB-A outlet. There are no additional ones hiding up and around here like you get in some other models, but hey, I think the basics are pretty well covered. Here's the second row of the new Triton. And as usual, that's my driving position up front there. And as you can see, 
I've got a fair amount of space in terms of leg room overall. This Triton is bigger now, it's wider, it's on a longer wheelbase. You don't have that uh, J-pillar that they used to call it once upon a time that did help with interior space, but it doesn't seem to matter here at the moment because I feel pretty comfortable in the back here. It's certainly better than the previous generation model. Now, one thing I've noticed, there are no air vents here at the back of the console as you would normally find, but you've got this uh, air diffusion system, I suppose, that wasn't the previous generation Triton. So it effectively sucks cooler air from the front of the cabin and then distributes it back into the rear here via these vents. Personally, I'm not that big a fan of it. I would prefer air vents down here pumping out their own source of cold air for people in the back, but I don't know, maybe I've got it wrong. Do I have it wrong? Let me know in the comments. Do you have good experience with this? Do you think it's a good way to go? I don't know, maybe I've got it wrong here, but let me know in the comments. But otherwise, we've got 12 volt there, we've got a USB, we've got a USB-C power outlet, and we've got room for bottles in the doors, a drop down armrest with two cup holders there. This is pretty good overall. I think it's a real advantage in terms of just having more space, especially when you're looking at this as a family car. You'll be able to fit maybe a rearward facing baby seat in here a little bit more comfortably than the previous generation model but bigger adults, even your workmates, can jump in the back here and they won't be complaining too much. Let's have a look at the tub setup of this Triton and take note, this is the GSR. So effectively all you can eat in the Triton range. First thing to call out here, when I lock the car, press the lock button there, the tailgate still doesn't lock because it doesn't work on central locking. Instead, you have to pop out the key from the fob there, put it in, turn it one way or the other. There you go, now it is locked, but there are other utes in the segment that have this tailgate operating on the entire car. So you hit the lock, hit the unlock button, and it does the rest. And I think that's much better than what we have here. But anyway, I'll put my key away. Let's open this up. It's a reasonably heavy tailgate, doesn't have the damping if you find that to be an issue. But also there are no power outlets in the back here. We do have a tub liner, which is great to have. There's four tie down points, but you could probably argue that this car is a little bit lacking in features in the tub in comparison to some others in the segment that have really pushed the game forward in this regard. And some people might really like the GSR treatment with this sailplane style setup, but yeah, maybe it looks cool. But for me, it just gets in the way from the side because you've effectively raised the side of the tub here and you can't reach over and in, you can't tie down off it. It's purely aesthetic and I don't know, I think it's better without it. Well, it's the same 2.4 litre turbo diesel engine, but now it's got a second turbocharger. And it's the same six speed automatic gearbox as well, but those ratios have been tweaked around a fair bit. And you're left with a car that's got definitely an improvement over the previous generation. It's got 150 kilowatts now, 470 newton meters, really good numbers, I think, for a four cylinder turbo diesel. It's still not the best in the segment in that regard. I mean, there are V6 diesels that are the next level up, I think, but you can find other four cylinders that have more outright power than this one here. But I've got to say, in application, this does feel like a well-sorted powertrain. That extra turbocharger, a smaller turbocharger means that initial response feels better as you press the throttle. There's more torque available lower in the rev range. And up towards the higher end of the rev range, it doesn't feel particularly great. I mean, no diesel loves to rev that much, and this is the same case here. So it's much happier to lug along at around 2000 RPM, something like that, and it feels pretty solid. The new electric power steering system feels nicely weighted. In situations like this, I'm driving around off-road at low speeds at the moment. It feels light, it's easy to throw around, it feels well weighted, but on the road as well. This Triton, it feels a little bit more premium now. It's got that lighter steering feel, but it still feels nice and direct and responsive through the steering column. Well weighted, I think, for the application. Now we've still got leaf springs at the back, we've still got drum brakes, we've still got independent front suspension, but it's all been changed quite a bit for this new Triton. And also you get a specific tune for the Australian market. Hardware changes, so you've got different springs and shocks up front, different dampers in the rear. In this car I'm driving at the moment, this is a GSR, but this model and also the GLS gets a softer spring in the back for a little bit more ride compliance around town. 
Now ride quality probably still isn't as good as what you'd get in a Ford Ranger or a Volkswagen Amarok for example. Those are still the two best utes in the segment in terms of refinement but this is absolutely an improvement over the old Trident and once again it plays in that bang for buck space I think. It's not as good as the leaders in the segment but hell this thing is not priced the same either so there is going to be a comparison there of price for a lot of buyers and this Triton might just be the sweet spot for a lot of people. Now while this engine does provide a fair amount of power and poke overall it is a little bit clattery at times. They have added an extra turbocharger, but it's also got a new fuel injection system. There are different pistons inside. There's a few other internal changes as well. And it's never really raucous or anything like that, but it does just feel a little bit noisy and clattery as it starts to work hard around that 3000 RPM range. And in terms of off-road capability, we've done some off-roading here out in regional South Australia and it's been a little bit of a challenge so far, but we haven't really pushed this to its limit yet, I would say. But what we've seen is fairly impressive. It's got regular ground clearance, I suppose, for the segment. It's no standout in that regard. It's got a locking rear differential in four-wheel drive models. And you've also got some drive modes here that helps to tailor things like throttle response, brake to traction control, and that sort of thing, which does certainly help but we'll hold off our judgment, I think, until we spend a little bit more time putting this thing to a bit more of a serious test. Well, we've been off-road, but we've also spent a lot of time on the bitumen as well in this new Triton. And that's an important thing for this car because Mitsubishi says it, everyone says it, this is the new family car these days. It's a tradie vehicle, it's an aspirational vehicle, it's a recreational vehicle, but this is also a family car during the week. And in terms of overall refinement, this Triton certainly does improve things in comparison to the previous generation. The old Triton wasn't too bad, it was feeling a bit long in the tooth, and this refreshes things in every aspect quite nicely, I think. Ergonomically, it's better, it's a bit quieter, it's a bit more comfortable to drive, it's got a, bit, a little bit more performance as well. And if you opt for GSR or GLS specifications, you do get Super Select all-wheel drive, which is a really good system. Mitsubishi has used it for a really long time now. It's got a Torsen centre diff, which allows for four-wheel drive on the road, but also two-wheel drive. And then of course, you've got a low range transfer case and a locking rear diff. Well, as you'd expect, this new Trident is better in just about every respect than the previous generation model. I love the fact that there's safety across the range. The engine and gearbox does feel good in application, but at the same time, there are some things that I don't like about it. But I've got to say, it is kind of forgivable when you put the price into the equation. This isn't competing with a Ranger Wild Track, even though it does kind of have the same paint color. It's a lot cheaper, and in that vein, I think this Triton will continue to be a really popular choice for those people who want a nice ute, they want a really good ute, but they don't want to spend the earth. This, this does feel like a bit of a sweet spot. Now, one thing we don't know is a bit more about off-road capability, and we're gonna do more payload and off-road and towing tests in the future. So stay tuned for that. But initial impressions of this Triton is so far, so good. <music> <laughs>